All right, everybody, uh, this is our first video together. Um, you're going to be taking notes as we go through this. Um, these is actually one of the key skills uh, for the entire year, to be honest. Uh, this is how to write for science, and actually you could use this in every subject, to be honest. Realistically, what this is is making um, a claim that's based upon evidence that you find uh, through your readings, through the data, through graphs, and you look at the data, you, you reason about it, and you make some sort of claim. And that can actually apply to just about anything, to be honest. Um, you'll see later on I'm actually going to use uh, a literature example not science. I will be doing science in class a lot, but I just wanted you to see how this connects to kind of everything and to an extent. Um, so realistically, a claim is a statement which answers a question. In science, this is going to be a conclusion that you make after doing an experiment. Uh, if we're just looking at some sort of problem. Uh, I might give you a problem in which you see a bunch of data, you hear about what's going on, um, and you try to come up with some sort of conclusions from looking at that data and reading about the scenario. Um, realistically, this applies to anything. I mean, you can make a claim about something from literature, you can make a claim about a figure from history, um, you can do all sorts of things with this sort of reasoning. So evidence takes all sorts of forms, and it can come in two types, qualitative and quantitative. Quantitative means that it's got a quantity associated with it. There's usually numbers. Uh, because it's science class, there's also going to be units with those numbers. Um, while qualitative data is more descriptive, so colors or things like that. Um, so we end up looking at things like observations, the results of our experiments, uh, data from tables, info from the journals. Uh, there's lots of stuff that we're going to bring in as evidence. And realistically, you actually start with evidence. Uh, you start with, here. here's the story, here's the setup, here's the results from what you've done. And you take that, and that's where you, you figure out your claim. The thing about evidence is that you want to have multiple pieces to support your claim. You want a lot of information, and to be honest, where you're at uh, as eighth grade science students, you probably are going to have an issue with having enough evidence. Um, it's, it is possible to say too much, for sure. Um, you definitely want to make sure that your evidence is connected to what you're talking about. And we'll get into that a little bit with the example that I have. Um, it's totally possible to give too much information, but for the most part, the vast majority of my students need to give more. Uh, three pieces of information and evidence is often a good number. Five is even better. You know, you don't really need too much more than that, but a lot of people struggle to have evidence or they will have one piece of evidence and that ends up getting them marked down very easily. Like I said, evidence has to be relevant to the claim. So just because there's data doesn't mean that's necessarily evidence. Um, you have to ask yourself, what's relevant to the question you're asking? What's relevant to the claim you're making? Um, in this, later on in this, I'm going to use an example from Harry Potter, and there's a lot of data in a book, and a lot of that data isn't necessarily useful for 
the claim that you're trying to make about a book. Uh, that's Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone might have been one of the shorter of the books, but it still has a lot of exposition, has a lot of extraneous information that wouldn't have been related to my claim. And you'll also see this in tables and graphs and everything that we do in science. Uh, there might be something that really interests you, uh, like a really particularly cool color change or a particularly violent reaction uh, might be very interesting to you, but it isn't necessarily what's going on uh, for your claim and the question that you're trying to answer. And finally, we have reasoning. Uh, reasoning provides a logical explanation that connects the claim to the evidence. So realistically, you actually start with evidence. So you're, you're looking at the data, you're looking at the setup, you have graphs, tables, numbers, all these things, and you try to make sense of them. And that is your reasoning. So looking at the evidence and trying to figure out how it answers your question. Are, are you seeing that every package of Skittles has the same number of each color? Or are you seeing something different? Those are the logical connections that can take the data, the evidence, and connect it to the claim and make it make sense. You really want to give a complete and detailed explanation. Again, eighth grade students have a tendency to not say everything they need to. You have a tendency to want to give as fast an answer as you can and move on. And that's not going to help you in science class, and it's really not going to help you in most of your classes. The more detailed your explanation, the better off you are. So ultimately, if you add claim and evidence and reasoning, you create an explanation for something. Uh, so you can think of the claim as what you know, the evidence is how you know it, and the reason is why does this evidence support the claim? And when you've done that, you have a, a complete explanation for something. Frankly, you're gonna be using this all year. And chances are you're not just going to use it in science class. You're going to be using it within your other classes as well. Um, Any time that you're trying to write an argumentative type essay or explain a, a situation to someone, this is the sort of process that you want to go through. Um, it's really just making a logical conclusion that's supported by data. So let's go ahead and take a look at a sample claim here. And this example claim, we're going to use Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Um, and the claim is that Harry Potter is established as a very courageous character within the novel. So that's a pretty easy claim to support. There's a lot of evidence for that. Um, I decided to take three pieces of evidence. Uh, the first being when he puts on the sorting hat. Uh, the sorting hat does say that he might belong in Gryffindor. And in the end, Harry does choose House Gryffindor. Uh, and the, one of the characteristics is being brave and daring and such uh, to be in House Gryffindor. So those are qualities that the sorting hat sees within Harry. Um, we also have a scene in around the middle of the book uh, where there's a troll and Harry does something that's both very brave and very stupid and he jumps on the back of said troll and, and the troll is huge. It's kind of crazy for a, a kid his age to be jumping on its back and, and doing what he does to save his friends. And then the end, there's the confrontation with, uh, with Quirrell. And in that confrontation, of course, on, on the back of his head, there is Voldemort. And that's the great evil that has caused his, his family to, to not be there anymore. So confronting that and, and fighting against it is kind of a huge deal for him. So here's my reasoning. 
Uh, the Sorting Hat immediately identifies Har that Harry is brave and courageous when he first puts the hat on. This theme of courage continues throughout the book, including Harry's confrontation with the troll and the confrontation with Qu uh, Quirrell. He places himself in danger to protect his friends and sends against a powerful evil, which was a source of great personal trauma. As a result, Harry Potter is definitely shown to be a brave character within this book. Notice that I don't bring in a lot of the extra information that you could. Uh, there's, let's say, the, the sorting hat scenario, or, or scene. When we watch that scene, the sorting hat also mentions that Harry could fit in Slytherin. And Harry, of course, chooses to go to Gryffindor and all of that, but there are pieces of information that talk to other characteristics that Harry has. And we don't necessarily need to bring in all that information. Uh, I don't go into details about Hermione and Ron and, and all those other things that I could bring into easily in a discussion about Harry Potter. I stay focused on my claim and what evidence exists to support my claim. My claim isn't that Harry has a bunch of attributes, it's simply looking at one attribute. So that's something important to think about as you're doing these kinds of writings uh, within both my class and other classes.